Hi, right, it's time for another math. Easy. So we're going to discuss the definite integral here. It's an introduction, basically, to integral calculus. Before I do this, I just want to recap on earlier that I showed, basically, to find the area under a curve. I would find you would draw this uh, f of x curve, and then you would just basically break down uh, below it just into a bunch of rectangles here, and then these rectangles, you would sum up the area basically in this in this sigma notation form, basically which is a sum of all of these rectangles here. So you'll have limit n approaches infinity. This is n rectangles. F of x i is just whatever. This i star just means uh, you would get your rectangle which has delta x length here, and then uh, this i star is anywhere between this interval here between for between each endpoints of the rectangle. You could pick the right endpoint like this. Or you could pick the center endpoint and just pick it somewhere like this. So you would get this value of f of x i star, and then multiply that by the width of that's that's this, this all the widths are all delta x. So you just multiply out, you get the rectangle area, and then you just sum it up for every single one. So this this one just equals to this this the first summation one. This first rectangle, second, third, all the way up to n rectangles here. So now this. This limit, which I uh, showed earlier, you can see in the video link below on basically summation of areas uh, videos that I did. Uh, basically, uh, this limit I showed that it arises for the uh, the area. This limit is for the area under a curve, and also for distance. My earlier video I did an example where distance is is the the same thing as the area under a velocity time graph. And it turns out that this type of limit occurs in many situations. Uh, example: lengths of curves, volume of solids. Centers of mass, force due to water, pressure, work, etc. Thus, this limit deserves a special name. So that's why I'm, we're going to introduce the integral notation. Okay, so now before I uh, basically define this definite integral, I'm just going to write down everything uh, we need to know for it first. So if f is continuous for uh, between a and and b, so basically x between a and b, and uh, like above there, then we could divide the uh, the full interval a and b into n subintervals or intervals of equal widths. So delta x is going to be the distance between these divided by the number of rectangles or n. In this case, then then if we let x0, x1, x2, etc. be the endpoints, all the way xn, remember x0 is this a and xn is b, then we also let the x1 star, x2 star, um, etc. all the way to xn equals the sample points in the subinterval. So basically, yeah, xi lies in between these two. So if you had the rectangle of, of uh, something like this here, if, if this is... Uh, one here, and no, no, yeah. If this is one, it's going to be zero. So we'll x i minus one, and the star is going to be anywhere in between, or equals the endpoints here. And so I just want, I just want to get through these first, and then the definite integral is going to be defined as yeah, basically yeah, definite integral of f from a to b. Then you'll just you can write it as this form you're probably used to if you already done uh, integral calculus. So from a to b of this giant s here of f of x dx equals to that limit which I showed above. So it's going to be a limit, yeah, as n approaches infinity of basically i equals 1 up to n rectangles of f of x i star and this delta x here. So this is our definition of the integral. So now just uh, some uh, minor notes here. If we chose this x i star to be the endpoint, so if x i star is equal to x i, because these are just the endpoint, the right endpoints, then the then is this going to be yeah this this limit be, uh, below here all we do is re replace the xi star with xi which is the right endpoints here we can also do the same with the left endpoints if we let xi star is equal to xi minus one here this is this is equal to left endpoints and you'll get something like here all we do is re replace xi star with xi minus one here and this definitely goes it's equal to it doesn't matter which one you pick is as you go to infinity the rectangles get smaller and smaller so you can get more and more accurate regardless of which endpoints or which in, or in between endpoints you choose it doesn't really matter so now before i go further i'm just going to go through some uh, some uh, important notes on this and a brief history lesson on uh, some guy named raymond here but uh, basically the symbol uh, this one here is just introduced by Leibniz, is another uh, mathematician here uh, and it's called an integral sign, and it, it's it basically yeah, it's an elongated S was chosen because it's it integrals just a limit of sums and S sums etc. So f of x is called the integrand inside this, the, so this is called integrand. A and B are called the limits of integration. A is the lower limit, B is the upper limit, and the symbol dx uh, it has no official meaning by itself, but you could also in interpret it as delta x or as it goes to infinity small. 
or uh, and basically yeah, basically this entire integrand is just one symbol here. So uh, integral of a to b of f of x dx here, and also the procedure for calculating an integral is called integration here, and also the sum here, this this uh, sum of the rectangles here is called a Riemann sum after the German mathematician. Bernard Raymond, born 1826 to 1860s. And here's a brief history lesson my calculus book at it. So I might as well just share it with you guys if you're interested in, in this or whatnot. So basically, Raymond received his PhD under the legendary Gauss here. This pretty smart guy from University of Göttingen, I think it's in Germany. And uh, remained there to teach. The definition above, which I showed, is integrals is due to Raymond here. And he also uh, made other major contributions to theory of functions, complex variables, yeah, of, of complex variable, of phys mathematical physics, number theory, and foundations of geometry. Also, his uh, broad concept of space and geometry turned out to be in the right setting for years later for Einstein's general relativity theory. So that guy's pretty, uh, he's done pretty, uh, he's done a lot, actually, in, in, a, in a relatively short amount of time because his health was really poor and he died of tuberculosis at the age of 39, but he accomplished a lot in his short lifespan. Okay, so now getting back to the uh, the, the integral, basically, if you have a function like this where it becomes negative here, so if this is positive, this is negative, this is positive here, if this is f of x here, so remember the integral is just a summation of all of the rectangles here, so if you imagine rectangles like across here, across here, etc., so these are positive, and then this one's going to be negative here, and they're just a summation of it, so yeah, so I just drew these out. But so basically, what you're doing here, if you were, if you had a function like this and you wanted from, th if this is b and this is a, because all you're gonna do is add up uh, rectangle sums. In this case, it's gonna be positive. Then you're gonna be adding negative, uh, yeah, negative areas here. So all that you're really doing is actually just finding the net area here. Yeah. So then this integral of f x dx from a to b is just gonna be equals to the net area here. And this equals to area one minus area two, where area one is, let's say, above the zero line. Yeah, or just above x-axis, and a two is equal to well, below the uh, the x-axis. Yeah, so then you, there's just a net area here, and, and if they're equal, you could have a zero integral here. So if this and this were exactly equal, it just it just cancel becomes zero. But also, just one final note before I do a short example here, basically. If we define this integral uh, by dividing the uh, interval a and b into subintervals of equal widths, uh, basically you have delta x here. But you could there's also a numerical techniques that you can basically do with uneven, yeah, uneven intervals here because because there are sometimes cases where you, these this delta x is not always the same. You could have something like delta x one, yeah, then delta x two, etc., all the way to delta x, and these ones are all different here. But if you were to uh, basically write the definition of the integral based upon different uh, yeah, different subinterval widths, then you're gonna have to ensure that the largest width approaches zero. Yeah, because you need to make sure all of these widths approach zero somehow, and this you'll do it by basically having if the max delta i approaches zero, then this ensures that every single one of these approaches zero. And this your limit will be something like this. We'll put a delta x i here, because now this one changes, and now the limit's not going to be as n approaches infinity, but as the max delta i approaches zero. I'm delta x. Let's really write this a bit better. Max delta x i approaches zero here, and then you'll get something like this here. It's a bit more complicated. And yeah, basically there are numerical techniques that you could integrate with uneven intervals here. And we're, we'll not go through that here, but uh, I might do an example later on. But anyways, yeah, I'll just do a quick example here. Basically this one says express this summation xi cubed plus xi times sine xi delta x as an integral on interval from 0 to pi here. Now from here the f of x, uh, just by looking at it, f of x should be just inside whatever this one here is. It's going to be equal to x cubed plus x times sine x here, and we could just change the delta x into a dx. And we are given the upper and lower limits, this one here, so basically a is equal to 0 and b is equal to pi here. So then this would just equal to, we'll just write it down, just write as an integral of from 0 to pi, f of x is going to be this one here, sine x, and then dx. Yeah, so this is basically it. Uh, yeah, that's all. We could just transform it to this one here. Yeah, we get something like this. And uh, later videos, I'll show how to basically 
uh, calculate these ones or basically take the integral of this. But uh, from this example, we see that in general, if we have something like this to limit this, uh, which equals this summation here, all, we, all we're doing is actually just switching the, yeah, this limit one is all we're doing is switching this limit uh, sigma notation i is 1 to n, making it into this s a to b. We're just writing the interval in now, and then the x i star, we just set it to x, and the delta x, we just set it to dx. And then that's all we're doing is we're just transforming to this notation here, and this is all one symbol here. Yeah, well, that's all for today, y'all. Oh, hopefully, you learned about this, uh, this integral. So basically, introduction to it. I'll go through a lot of videos later on on it and how to calculate and do integration and whatnot. Hopefully, you learned. And remember, you can download these notes uh, in the Dropbox link below. And remember, it's just net area for the integral. And hopefully, uh, you enjoyed this little history lesson about Bernard Raymond, pretty smart guy. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned. And um, stay tuned for another math easy solution.